Well, I'll tell you one thing, this money in the bank, and that's a great kicker. So glad to have uh, this next guest on. Certainly has trained some of the best in the game, and that is Coach Mike McKay from One on One Kicking. Coach, appreciate you joining us this morning on the Nick Brown Show. Uh, thank you for having me, sir. I-, I tell you, I look over this list, uh, and we've talked before. You know how fond I am for kickers. I think it's the uh, absolute uh, most important position. I mean, right there ahead of the quarterback and, and all your team, everything. But the people that you have worked with is incredible. And I got just uh, scout.com calls you the number one training facility in the country for kickers and punters, uh, rivals, uh, one-on-one kicking trains the best of the best. Uh, you've had uh, the best camp for kickers and punters in the country. That's from ESPN Radio 760. You've had four Ray Guy Award winners. You've had uh, like 11 guys in the finals, 22 in the semifinals, four Lou Groza winners. What is it that makes one-on-one kicking different and you train all of these winners? Well, actually, I mean, it just comes down to, you know, the drill work that we do, you know, at, you know as a staff teaching, you know, younger kids, you know, in high school. Uh, developing them as they get into college and then hopefully trying to, you know, uh, they get that lottery shot to, you know, get a shot in the National Football League. Uh, when it comes down to technique and, and muscle memory, uh, you know, these players have to work in every situation uh, for game situations. So, you know, we try to prepare them mentally and physically uh, to be prepared for any situation in any game. One uh, one thing I want to talk about looking at all of this, you talk about the muscle memory. And one thing I've talked with you before, what age do you start training a kicker? And what is the, what is the best for, for, an early, for an early person? So someone's listening, driving around in their car today or listening to us on our Internet feed. They said, you know what, my son may be a little bit smaller than the average guy. Uh, what, is the, what is the best way to begin to train a kicker and how young – do you begin working with guys? Well, we start uh, usually at the age of 12, you know, if they're around the eighth grade. And the reason we start at a later age, eighth grade, almost in your freshman year, is because of, you know, the growth plates. You know, these kids are still growing. Uh, we don't want to damage any growth plates because if you kick too much, you know, people think, oh, you know, you know you're just a kicker and you know, kickers are kind of weak. And, well, if you look at some of the guys today, they're monstrous. Yes. <laughs> so... And they have to be, you know, uh, they have to be just as good as an athlete as a running back or, or a wide receiver or any other position. I mean, Ryan Allen made a tackle last week, you know. So if, if when we take kids on board, you know, at that young age, it's easier to develop them and get them in a proper technique that they need to be, you know, to be consistent that they'll have that chance to possibly get a, you know, a scholarship offer. We're talking with Coach Mike McCabe this morning, owner of One-on-One Kicking, sponsored by Adidas. uh, And uh, we're talking to him about uh, kickers uh, across the uh, college and NFL ranks. Uh, You know, Coach, kicking the kicker is such an interesting position to me because it seems to be the most in football reliant upon, as you said earlier, muscle memory or just learning the proper technique. And yet at the same time, it also seems to be the most directly influenced by emotion and, and intellect and, and the ability to calm yourself and focus within the uh, high-pressure situations that kickers are brought into. How much of your training and how much of the counseling that you have there at your camp is uh, emotion and intellect-based? How much do you, do you focus on life training as, a, as well as the actual techniques in kicking? Well, I mean, anything that you have – in your life can affect anything that you do, no matter if you're in a, in a common job, working 95, or, or the kicker. Um, you know, if you let your emotions overtake you, anything that you do, no matter if you have a pressure situation in a game, um, such as Ryan Allen, he's a rookie trying to make the Patriots, uh, make the final roster. I mean, that's a lot of pressure. I mean, you're going, going up against a player that's played for three, four, five years in the NFL, um, you know, you know, so it, it, it takes a lot of what I would call making your veins like ice, you know, pressure cooker situations. So, you know, we work a lot on the kids um, in, in situations using fog horns, you know, squirting water on them, um, you know, raising our voices as much as we can to put pressure on them where we can try to make them flinch or, or miss because we want them to completely understand that this is just a kick, man. 
All you have to do is just put it straight to the uprights. All you have to do is focus on your ball as a punter, focus on your job, what you have to do, you know, and feel proud of it. And, and that's something that they can always base off in life, that if you're dealing with the hardest situations, no matter what you're dealing with, that God's always going to be there to assist and help you. And you're also at the same time going to be able to overcome anything just because you've always learned that niche on how to become a champion, how to be the best of the best, how to, to become more consistent at anything that you want to do. You know, one of the things that we've noticed in the game, and, and this is just anecdotally, I haven't looked at the numbers or the statistics to see how much of a rise there's been, but it seems like, it feels like, there's been a significant increase in the past, let's say, 10 years or so in international kickers, at the college level especially. We've always seen a few in the NFL, uh, but you've got guys from rugby and from uh, soccer backgrounds uh, starting even now in high schools and then getting ready to move into college game and and work their way up, getting ready for that NFL, as you said, kind of the lottery ticket. Um, Has there been, from your viewpoint, uh, a significant increase in the international players? And if so, what caused that? Or, Or is it just anecdotal? It's just me noticing their names more. Well, in actuality, you know, there's there's only maybe I think in the Cleveland arena maybe five guys that have come from Australia, you know, as kickers or punters. I think one just got picked up for the NFL because he had a crazy video, um, you know. And I think a lot of it has to do with marketing, uh, you know, marketing side on the NFL. Um, but you know, also this player that they ended up finding overseas has quite a leg. Um, and that's somebody they may develop in you know, the National Football League over time until to see what he can do. Uh, on a collegiate basis, you know, they'll end up getting some players, let's say from Australia or, or a rugby player, um, you know, that they end up scholarshipping just because he's got great video, but he's never been in a real game situation. So, you know, those are, that's a 50 50 shot of what you get in there um, just because you're, you're dealing with someone that's never played in, it in, in our game which is, uh, you know, American football. Yeah, one question that I have, and maybe it's just me watching, and I certainly enjoy uh, kicking and punting. It's my favorite position on the field, no doubt. I make no bones about that. I will tell that uh, to everybody. There's some kickers that I, I watch, and, and I know I guess it's the mental aspect is the question that I'm asking because it seems like if their team is down three or four touchdowns and for whatever reason the coach decides to go for the field goal, it seems like their range is a lot further than when it's a tie game and the ball's on the 10-yard line. The pressure, and you talked about some of those things that you get towards pressure. And, and in your line of work, and I, and I just the, the roster of guys that you've trained uh, is incredible. Has there ever been like a kicker that just couldn't handle the pressure that you were with? He had all the fundamentals, but the pressure aspect of it. I know you talk about the foghorn and yelling and screaming, but it just seems like when you watch the game, there's that one guy, he can make a 53-yarder if they're down by four touchdowns, but he misses the chip shot if they're tied. I don't know if there's a question in there. <laughs> oh, well, geez. Uh, <laughs> I think that that kind of could happen to just about anybody. It, it just depends. I mean, you know um, – Garrett Harley just went three for three. I think he had a long one at 53. You know, I'm watching, you know, Saints play Tampa Bay. Then I got Chaz Henry there and Derek Demke that we train. And and then you look at the, you know, the Patriots. And then, um, no, actually, that that was the Saints versus the Raiders. Then you had Marquette King, uh, great punter. Uh, then you have, I think it was Tampa Bay playing the Patriots, correct? Yes. Um, then, you know, you got Chaz Henry that's there, Derek Demke, and, and then you have, uh, you know, Ryan Allen that we train. So it's it's a great honor to have such great athletes that we've trained since, you know, you know, for their freshman year in college or even high school that made it to that level. Um, but there is going to be times that they're going to miss. That they are human. They're not machines. Uh, the easiest kick uh, to miss is the shortest one, uh, especially ones that are on the 23-yard line. Um, you know, your 43, you know, right hash, your – 38 left hash are your most missed kicks in, in college and the pros. So as a company, we evaluate what they miss in the NFL and what they miss in college and high school, and we use those as our landmarks of kicks that they have to make. You know, one question I want to ask, and I want to tie this in locally, how, how special was it to work with the only uh, Ryan Allen, the only Ray Guy Award winner two years in a row? Well, actually, uh, I, I met Ryan because um, – I trained Johnny Hecker that was at Oregon State, 
and um, this is when Ryan was at Oregon State as a preferred walk-on. Uh, Johnny won, you know, won the job, the scholarship. Um, Ryan ended up uh, transferring to Law Tech. Uh, started training Ryan that first year uh, when he came to Law Tech, and you know, when these two friends are are battling it out for the next three or four years, you know, you're going to create two monsters. You know, one's already the punter for for the Rams. And that's Johnny Hecker. And then, uh, you know, Ryan Allen's a different beast. He, he's one that took it very serious, mastered his craft. Um, you know, I, I told him, I said, you know, you have the ability to, to win the Ray Guy Award. I said, which is great. That's not going to get you in the league. But, you know, it's a great honor to have, you know, especially for your football program, yourself and your family. And uh, this is a guy that when he did, you know, win the award, I said, let's go for two. Uh, and and worked uh, extremely hard at it and did it, <laughs> you know. So, uh, which was a surprise, you know, to anybody. I mean, to, to accomplish something, winning it twice, no matter if it's back to back or not, doing it back to back, I don't think it's ever going to be done again. Uh, my, coach, uh, talking to Coach Mike McKay from One on One Kicking, sponsored by Adidas. Tell us all about the uh, web page and tell us about the camps that you have. And I certainly uh, appreciate you joining us this morning. Always enjoy talking to you, and certainly we will uh, speak again. Well, actually, our company, um, our website is one on one kicking dot com. That's spelled out. Our one on one kicking camps. Uh, we have fifteen locations nationwide. Uh, the closest one we, we one we have to you uh, is right there near Mississippi State. Uh, in Mobile, Alabama. But, uh, yeah, anybody out there wants to get better and and train and, and try to get into college and get a scholarship, well, you know, we're the guys that are going to help you get there. Well, Mike, we certainly appreciate you joining us, and always I look forward to talking with you because we know, you know, everybody else can have their quarterback and linebacker, but here on the Nick Brown Show, we're partial to kickers and punters. Hey. So am I, trust me, because you know what? We're game winners and rainmakers. <laughs> there you go. Coach, Coach Mike McCabe, we appreciate you joining us on the Nick Brown Show. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Yeah, and you always enjoy it. And you go to the webpage and you look, it is year-round, and it was funny because uh, – I actually uh, talked to Mike before uh, off the uh, off the air, and he talked about the growth plates. And then I, you know, I just wanted to double check, cross reference, went to talk to uh, Dr. Major Blair, and sure enough, you know, guy does know what he's talking about. He certainly has trained some of the best. And you go back and look at scrolls on his uh, at the bottom of the webpage, colleges that use him, and you can see uh, Louisiana Tech is on there, and there are others, Oklahoma, some SEC schools as well, guys that he's trained. And once they get in the program of they really respect his opinion. They go to him, so it's a, it's a great uh, great deal. Enjoy. Yeah, it. there's there's no guarantee you're going to be a, a two time Ray Guy Award winner, but yes. if you if you're a kicker and you want to get better, this is the guy that that I'd talk to, man. It's it's an absolutely excellent school. Hey, and and uh, Ryan Allen, uh, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, and I think he's got a a long career in the NFL. I really do. Uh, I think the guy's right. I think the. They're the, uh, the rainmakers and the game winners, man. It's the kickers and punters. I always enjoy uh, talking to Coach Mike McCabe. Go check that webpage out. We're going to take a break and go check out another uh, cup of coffee. You are listening to the Nick Brown Show on ESPN 97.7 FM, brought to you by Red.